Hi, my name is Casey Zander. I'm the founder of Headman. My mission here is to revitalize masculinity and help make men full stack. If you're new to this channel, what I do is I help men within their relationships and ultimately become their best versions of themselves. If you're not new to this channel, I think you're in for one kick-ass ride because this video is going to be pretty cool because I break down the top 10 false beliefs regarding love, regarding relationships, re regarding men in all ways, shapes, and forms. And this is especially pertinent to married men or men who have been in long-term relationships, okay? The, the, the fact is this, the reason why you know, one out of two marriages fails and 85% of marriages that end in divorce are initiated or filed by women is due to the fact that men are fundamentally leading the incorrect way. And the fact is the definition of masculinity of what a guy thinks his job is, is far different than what it actually is to keep the unity stable. So today I'm going to be diving into the top 10 reasons why most men cannot keep their relationships or marriages stable. And ultimately I'm going to be back in this with proof after working with thousands of students along the way. So first off, number one, the biggest false belief that I hear time and time again is when men say, my situation's different. Every single guy that I've ever gotten on the phone with tell me his background of his situation. When he is in the weeds, when you are in the weeds, and I, I'm, not, I'm not immune to this either, we all wholeheartedly believe that our situation is different. Since we all wholeheartedly believe that our situation is different, we think that we should get special treatment, when in actuality our situation is very much the same. Either the woman lost attraction, the woman's pulling away, the woman's giving mixed signals, or she's hot and then she's cold and you're not responding correctly. Ultimately, what this stems to is men being reactionary to their woman and ultimately not pulling the levers of, you know, let me think of the right word for this. The opposite of reactionary would be ultimately leading. So they're not leading the conversation, they're reactionary to what her moves are. This is very unmasculine. This is very not grounded. When you actually finally live with the belief that you are the same as everybody else, like seriously, your relationship is probably the same. Like you're a man, you have certain desires. She's a female, she has certain desires. When you get rid of the whole I feel like preconceived notion, your life becomes a hell of a lot easier, a hell of a lot quicker. So that's number one. The very second biggest false belief, <laughs> the very second, the second false belief that I see time and time again with every single man I've ever worked with is they personally believe that they can outwork attraction. Number two, the biggest false belief is that you cannot outwork attraction. Attraction is not something you can work on, okay? It just isn't. Attraction is an internal desire based off of who you are, how you look, how you act, how you talk, how you sound, and how you make her feel. Because of that, this can only be demonstrated by the true feelings that you bring out of her by being the type of man that she's actually going to have strong emotional pull towards. See, most men simply just don't know how to be this type of guy. There's many men that think they can outwork attraction, meaning the more I put into this, like if I go get, if I sign us up for a couple's massage, if I go bring her flowers, if I bring her a box of chocolates, if I go take her shopping, if I book a vacation, if I show that I'm home more with the kids so I'm a good caregiver, those might be sweet gestures, but they have nothing to do with how your woman views you. So I'll put up a picture of a woman on the screen. If this woman was trying to make you be attracted to her by things she could do for you, what would you think? That's the exact way that your wife feels and or girlfriend who's pulling away from you every single time that you believe that. Attraction cannot be outworked. Attraction is something internal. You must master the ability to pull the psychological levers of a woman's world internally. That's the only way. And she needs to know that you have that power because if you don't have that power, that strips you from everything that made you a man in the first place. Number three, you can out-communicate love. This one baffles my mind and makes me scratch my head. Communication, if we just communicate, he says, if we just talk a little more, if she'd finally see things from my perspective, you don't understand that women do not communicate the same way you do. You're getting rock solid advice and value from this video through me communicating through the content of the words at which I'm speaking. However, women do not communicate that way. Women communicate based off of how the words you're saying makes them feel. Now, ultimately, to be a cool guy, like to be a guy who's living a social life of abundance, think of all of the things you could be doing. You could be hanging out with your friends, building a multi-million dollar business, going to the gym. You could be having a social life of abundance. 
You could be chilling down the road with at a, some rock concert or a social event. You could be doing anything, but instead you're sitting there spending time thinking about ways you can try to communicate. What a lower, like what a low value way to spend your time. This is why your woman fundamentally does not want to communicate with you because you spend your time actually trying to get communication or pine for her communication. You understand the phone works two ways. If she wanted you, she'd pick up the phone and call you. The mouth works two ways. If she needed more conversation, if she needed more validation, more hugs, attention, and kisses, she would come to you and give you one. So it's her job to bring that communication. Your job is to be the rock solid man on his path, purpose, mission, vision, and actually have principles you live by. I don't get any, like my bank account doesn't grow. My, I don't get any more healthier and I don't have any more fun sitting there on the couch communicating more. That makes me sound like a pansy ass. And that's how most men sound. So if you're part of Headman Nation, this is going to resonate with you. If you're not part of Headman Nation, you can just click out of the video because I'm, I'm, I'm seriously done trying to appease everybody. Either by now you understand my message and my mission or you just don't. And either you align with the things, the thoughts, feelings, emotions that I'm actually provoking out of you or you don't. And if you don't, that's fine. You can hit the X button on this video. But if you are a part of Headman Nation, keep watching. The very fourth false belief that I see time and time again is that you have something to prove. Men believe they have something to prove. If I could just prove, you could, you could not believe how many times I've said this. If I could, I've sort of heard this. He goes, if I could just prove to her I'm a good dad. If I could just prove to her I could love her correctly. If I could just prove to her that I know how to communicate. If I could just prove to her that I'm the best fit. You have nothing to prove to anybody. I don't care if you make $5,000 a year or you make 50 million. The second you think that you have to prove anything to your wife or girlfriend or someone you're in a relationship with is the exact second that once again, you lose your balls of everything that made you a man in the first place. You have nothing to prove to anybody. Like since, since when did men become literally this soft? That it's all about the validation of keeping the relationship stable. It's all about going through the grind work of doing the right things to be the good guy or else your, your girl will walk out the door. Like when did it become that in depth that a guy is literally wearing his heart on a sleeve, willing to prove himself as if it's like the, a boss or a CEO or a job position he's applying for. Get the F out of here. Seriously. You do not have anything to prove to anybody. I hope that you find some sort of motivation or at least relief from the slavery your brain has might have held you in from constantly feeling as if you're not good enough. Number five, the next false belief I constantly see time and time again is that love takes work. Love does not take any work at all. None. In fact, let me tell you this. If you want to make an emotional connection or impact, the guy who's jacked on the Harley Davidson mo motorcycle smelling like whiskey and has tattoos he could make a bigger impression on your wife in 30 minutes in the bedroom and then zip up his pants and never see her again. That will be more of a love connection he built in that half hour than your, cook, than your cookie cutter ass did baking cookies trying to play dad at the soccer game every single week. Like love does not take any work. Here's a picture of a Victoria's Secret angel. Does she have to put in work for you to find her beautiful and love her? Absolutely not. Why? Because it's internal. Love in no way, shape or form takes any work. You know what makes her love you? When you're attractive and when you actually provoke the right emotions out of her, but most men just don't know how to do this. Now you might be sitting here thinking, Casey, but I want the tactics. I want the step-by-step -step guides, the step-by-step -step processes, the step-by-step know-how. Yeah, that's great. I get it. But guess what? That won't work until you fix your brain. And that's why the 10 things that I wrote down on this notebook are literally going to be life changing. So that way you can actually save yourself from your own worst nightmare, which is trauma of being left or trauma of a divorce or anything like that. We're making men strong again. And that's part of being a head man. Number six, the thought or false belief that your woman is broken. Your woman is not broken. She's broken with you. Your woman is just fine. She, she might've had any, you'd see the amount of excuses I see guys make. Oh, she had, she's broken. She had a traumatizing father. She's broken. She had a traumatizing coworker. She's broken. She suffers from bipolar disorder. She's broken. She suffers from narcissisticism. 
How, how many more different filler words do you want to put in before you just accept the fact that you're not doing the right things to make her like you? Because here's the fact. You as a man, I could plague you with bipolar disorder, PTSD, trauma, and your dad could have beat your ass rat and your dad could have beat your ass red for 10 years growing up for all I care. I put that Victoria's Secret model right here on the screen, your willy will still get hard. Your woman is the exact same way. Stop making this so damn confusing. Start letting go of the beliefs that have held you hostage time and time again. So no, your woman's not broken. That's the sixth biggest false belief that I see time and time again. Number seven, anytime a guy starts the message off with, I feel like, I feel like this, I feel like that, I feel like she just can't communicate, I feel like she's maybe plotting an exit, I feel like she's maybe having her own savings account to leave me, I feel like this, I feel like she just can't connect sexually. Dude, I don't care what you feel like, and neither does she. That's your whole issue. Too many feelings, you feel too much. Do you know how I wake up? I wake up every day, I'm never mad, I'm never sad, I'm never happy, I'm never depressed. This is just my life. I'm happy with who I am day to day, but guess what, my emotions are sure as shit not gonna run me wild. Cause sometimes I feel tired, sometimes I might feel hungover, sometimes I might feel pissed off, but the second I play into my feelings, that stripped me of everything that made me a man in the first place, of having balls, of staying grounded and strong. Your woman's not gonna care what you feel like. And the more you try to mix your preconceived notions in your head why this relationship is failing based off what you feel like is the second you're not actually looking at the cold hard facts of how you're living. This is what I call weakening of men. Generation after generation after generation until these are the false beliefs every single man holds. As if there is such a thing as unconditional love. These are the false beliefs that need to be broken or else you will never be able to move forward in any aspect in life. What is number eight? Number eight, the, se the eighth biggest false belief that I see. Thinking that you can get in her head. So many guys say, I think she's thinking this. You will never know. You're never going to know what your woman's actually thinking. So you might as well use a whopping zero minutes of bandwidth, even trying to figure it out. Because the second you do, the second she sees you're reactionary, which means she's now leading the psychological plays of the relationship, which is stripping you of your masculinity because now she's leading this mentally and not you. Who cares what she's thinking? Who cares? You will never know. Just like you'll never know what your boss is actually thinking. You're never going to know what your best friend's actually thinking. You're never going to know what anybody's actually thinking. You will just never know. So just be okay with that. Number nine. The ninth biggest false belief that I see is that men have to give up their passions to increase her genuine desire. Giving up your passions does nothing but make you look weak. When she fell in love with you, she fell in love with you because you were the kick-ass guy on the rugby team. You did have a social life of abundance. You did have great flirtatious game that probably pulled her. So then you stopped being everything that you were and she doesn't respect you for anything that you've became because even if she told you she wanted you to be that, that's more or less a, te a test of your competency if you'll fall into it. Stop thinking you need to give up anything in pursuit of love. Which brings me to my final point. The biggest false belief that I see men make is they tell themselves they need love. You don't need love. You need food, you need water, you need a bed. Just think about that. Oh, I need handholds, I need kisses, I need sweet cuddles, I need my woman. Like, do you wanna just live like a bitch forever? Like you, if you, if you sell that week, if you just, if you identify as just a pansy, oh, I need this. I need love. She's not going to give it to you. So some people might think, well, Casey, you sound cold. You sound apprehensive. I'm not, I'm not emotionally unavailable to any woman or any relationship. What I'm telling you is that if you live like this, you're going to get all the love, all the sex, all the validation, all the appreciation from a woman that you could ever imagine because you're finally centered in who you are, not the false beliefs and not the false belief Kool-Aid more or less, you've probably been drinking for the past 20, 30, 40, for some of you even 50 or 60 years. And I truly do hope that this video served you. If you're part of Headman Nation, check out the links that I have below. If you genuinely want to see more, I advise you to watch this video on the screen that I'm about to put up right here at the card. And keep on subscribing because we're here to actually make men strong again and revitalize masculinity. 
We'll see you in the next one.